Sandy Koufax by Mr. Cartoon, 18 copies sold. So when you relate that to the King Saladin, Tony Gwynn, I think we could see a very, very similar number. So when you're looking at maybe a print run here, over 4,000, 4.5, but I think with the addition of the autograph, we're gonna see that card possibly get over 6,000. So it's gonna be very challenging to get over 3,000. I think this card's gonna to get to. So if you bought my Griffin number after day number one, you are a winner. But look, a lot to get to today, a lot of print runs, very little time. Welcome to episode number 104 of the Project 2020 show. It is the end of week number 31. We have now seen all 10 cards this week, and another week passes by with another player having two cards released. What is going on? What is Topps doing releasing multiple players or multiple cards of the same player in the same week? But hey, my name is Chris, otherwise known on Twitter and Instagram is at CRT underscore sports cards. And my website, CRTSportsCards.com, is where you want to go for all of your Project 2020 news and statistics. So let's take these one at a time from low to high. The Joshua Vitas, Frank Thomas coming in just under 1900 Very happy that card came in over 1800 As you know, I theorized that card potentially could fall under 1700 based on the pre orders based on the player, and based on the artist. But the fans of Project 2020 kept that over 1800 and that is good to see. Now, the second card that day was the Mr. Cartoon Sandy Koufax. And as I said, it's going to come in very similar to the King Saladin, Tony Gwynn, and it did just that. It didn't top it though. It did finish about 50 copies below, but very nice to see those pre-orders hold true to that print run at the end of the day. Moving on to the Wednesday cards, which then we saw this morning from the print runs, the Jackie Robinson and the Ken Griffey Jr. These numbers were interlinked from the beginning after they announced the autograph of the player. On the JK5, Jackie Robinson, I was a little sad this didn't top 3,000, but 2.6 is not a bad number in Project 2020 right now. I'm very happy it didn't come in the low twos. I'm also very happy it didn't come in over 4,000 because I really think when we're starting to see cards over 4,000, that's kind of that equilibrium point where there are just too many cards at the current moment for demand to where they're kind of worth less on the secondary market. Now, there are a few exceptions out there. For example, the Dwight Gooden F dot over 7,000, and that's worth more. The Mike Trout Keith Shore, but I like right now to see cards stay under that 4,000 mark. But then on the Griffey, the card that had the autograph, and the result of this card, 4.7, proves just one thing. The autograph does not drive the print run anymore. The juice has been squeezed out. The orange is dry. Nobody is buying these cards for the autograph. Or if they are, they're only buying one or two on the off chance they're going to pick up an autograph, if they even exist. When you think back to the first time these cards were announced with autographs, people were buying 10, 20, 30, hoping to get an autograph but the juice is gone, nobody's doing that anymore. And it was actually kind of, it was actually quite sad to see this card come in under 5,000 because that means the excitement is not there. But if Tops can prove to us the autographs exist, this will rebound for the cards coming forward, especially on the Mike Trouts. And with this Griffey result being so low, I really think we're gonna see a very low Mike Trout in relation to the recent Tyson Beck. But I'll come back to that Mike Trout, Ullman Allen pre-order data here in a second. But something really interesting happened to me today in Project 2020. And I will say, if you follow me on Twitter, I was basically non-existent all day on Twitter. I didn't get to see the cards until around probably 4 or 4.30 my time. And one thing popped into my head immediately. These are the same cards. These cards are exactly the same. But you're going to say, Chris, it's Andrew Thiel. It's Keith Shore. These can't be the same. They actually are the same card. So let's take a look at that Ripken and the Jackie Robinson. So here's card number 303 and 304. And yes, the colors are different. But look, we have the bat over the right shoulder. We have the left hand at the bottom of the bat. We have the right hand above the left hand. We have the fans looking at the back of the player and we're looking face on to the player. So when you look at the cards, yes, they look different, but they are actually the same card. And at this moment in Project 2020, neither one of these cards, or really I think any card from any artist, is gonna all of a sudden make you a fan of their cards. Now, I could be wrong, I'm making a big 
broad stroke journalization here. But look, with this Keith Shore Ripken, if you like Keith Shore, you're going to pick up this card. If you like Cal Ripken or you're collecting Cal Ripken, you are gonna buy this card. If you're a Jackie Robinson collector of Project 2020 like myself, I am going to purchase this card. If I remember, can you believe I forgot to purchase the JK5 Jackie Robinson? I am on this horrendous trend of forgetting to buy my cards during the week, and it happened again this week. So when I talk about the fact that Tops should have had an automatic buy feature at the beginning, I would have signed up immediately. But when you take a look at Andrew Thiel's work, I can't wait for these to be in the near future. Maybe a nine, uh, eight by 11 or eight by 10, whatever those big sizes are. This card is really good looking, but it's really small on a baseball card. If this is blown up and you can really see the detail, this is going to be an amazing print for a wall in the near future. So although that Jackie Robinson by Andrew Thiel is my card of the day, it is not the fans card of the day. At 8 o'clock tonight, that Keith Shore Cal Ripken is outsold the Jackie Robinson 28 to 18. But what do those numbers mean this early on for a print run? I really think based on the artist performance and the player performance, we are going to see similar print runs to maybe 2.5, 2.4. These potentially could get lost in the shuffle of the weekend, along with the fact that people have, might be broke or might be out of money for extra funds based on Griffey coming out, Mike Trout coming out. There have been a lot of great cards this week. The one card that could finish under 2,000 is going to be the Don C. Nolan Ryan. The question though is will this card have an artificial print, a print run bump because it's tied with that Trout from a bundle perspective? There's always a natural lift when you're with a Trout card, but does that mean that this card goes from 700 to now 19 or 21 or 22? And then on the Trout, 122 pre-orders after two days at eight o'clock tonight. I really think we're gonna see a very, very similar performance to that Tyson Beck, even though the juice is really out of the autograph at the moment, I still think that's kind of the floor for Mike Trout, but we will see where it lands this time tomorrow, and hopefully we get print runs this weekend. If not, we will find them out on Monday morning. And yes, I know the Mike Trout Keith Shore is a little bit lower than the Tyson Beck, but that is because it had Bryce Harper on the card. With that, I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you back Monday evening for the start of week number 32 of Project 2020.